Hello, I'm Andrew Fidel Fernando. I'm here with Russell Arnold uh, after Sri Lanka had pulled off a historic 2-0 uh, series win over South Africa in Port Elizabeth. Russell, given the disarray that this team was in when they arrived, given the problems uh, that they've had over the last couple of months, uh, they hadn't won a match in, you know, since October, can you believe what they've just achieved in South Africa, becoming the first Asian team to win on these shores? Problems, Andrew? What problems? They seem to disappear, don't they? About 75% they seem to go, uh, go away when uh, such a thing happens. Yeah, uh, coming out here we gave them no chance, especially after the bruising in Australia. Uh, but it, it's been incredible, the way they've turned it around. Um, nothing much to write home about, in the sense that uh, the batting was not great. Kusal Pereira's masterclass in Kingsmead, and then uh, it was only this last partnership between Kusal uh, Mendis and Oshida Fernando that suggested that these guys now understand what to do. This is the way to bat and that can be replicated. Kusal Pereira's innings we won't see again. It's one in a lifetime thing. So for them to be learning right through uh, and the key factor for me right throughout this series was the fact that they kept trying. Yes, when they're losing and getting battered, being pushed into such a lonely corner, there are no positives, there are no positive vibes around. Um, and they, were, they kind of didn't know to win. They didn't know to tactically be smart, when to put the foot on the opposition's throat. None of that was there, but we always knew there was, there was skill. It was about it coming out. And I've told you this before, how do you turn it around? Someone had to stand up and do something special. That was Kusal Pereira. And you can see the confidence levels that came uh, from it. Uh, Kusal Mendy standing up. But what really um, we must highlight is the fact that our seamers, depleted bowling attack, Suranga Lakmal maintaining a high benchmark, probably even which the South African fast bowlers couldn't. Just on off stump, not many wickets to show, but he kept going. Vishwa Fernando showed that he'd got skill and uh, to bowl South Africa out for 128 in that second innings, that was magnificent. And they did it by doing the basics right, not trying too many things. They had to lift themselves up once again after conceding that um, lead with a poor batting performance. But resilience was there. They seemed to be working together. They seemed to be believing and just hanging in there. And then comes the moment. So really, really happy with uh, how they've gone about it and what they've achieved. Is, is there something that you can put your finger on? Because we've seen this team you know, lose 3-0 at home against England. We've seen them uh, be modest a lot over the last couple of years. Is there something you can put your finger on that, that, you know, that was the change here, that allowed them to hang in there, as you said, allowed them to keep coming back at South Africa? I guess they had nowhere to go. They only had themselves. Everyone was critical. The fans were turning on them. Uh, around the world, the Sri Lankan team is very, very poor and probably deserved the criticism to some of the performances that uh, we did see. They were left with only themselves and they responded as a group, which is the incredible thing for me. Yeah, the, the younger players coming in added a lot of uh, enthusiasm and the freshness. Now, some of them have not been around the Sri Lankan squad at all. They just walked straight into the team. Ambul Denia, Oshida Fernando, and even Vishu Fernando playing uh, quite early in his career. His second test match back because of injuries to the other bowlers. So they are bringing some freshness from the outside, probably players without these cars, and they were able to perform. So you look back at um, our domestic level and see, look, these guys have come through there. I'm not trying to say that we don't have issues and we need to fine-tune it, but there is skill. That's, that's what I'm trying to say there. So um, it, it was uh, really good to see what has come out of this tour, especially after leaving the shows in December and then getting bashed around. Uh, you touched on it a bit earlier, but uh, Oshida Fernando and uh, Kusal Mendes' stand of 163 unbeaten is uh, by far the best in the series. What did they do here? that no one else, no other pair managed uh, right through? Look, they've been playing shot of ball, all the batsmen from both teams. But today, Sri Lanka were quick to score runs. They were attacking, that's the flair, that's their natural flair, which they relied on, but they left the ball well. They never got caught on the crease. They trusted the bounce of the pitch. They were leaving well. South African bowlers were forced to come fuller. And when it was short, they put it away. So they stuck to a simple game plan, stayed positive, in, uh, in their belief in what they could do and the results were plain to see that South African attack is a top-class attack. They've beaten so many teams around the world and causes plenty of ripples in top-class batsmen. Uh, but today they looked ordinary to the approach of these two. 
So I think the fact that they were more organized, they let the bowlers bowl to them rather than searching for that ball and trying to look for runs. I was of the opinion that if the match finishes around lunchtime, Sri Lanka will be losing. There was no way they're going to get those 137 runs in two hours. They got it with risk-free cricket, just quality sh shots, top-class options, tactical batting, which we've spoken of before where Sri Lanka have been poor tactically. So it was great to watch, but the key was um, knowing where that off stump is and leaving well. Uh, and I've got to ask you this to finish off. Uh, you've seen a lot of great Sri Lankan victories, a lot of great Sri Lankan Sri Lanka uh, series victories. Where would you put this one? Easily up there, Andrew. Uh, we've touched on the issues, we've touched on the personnel out here, we've touched on um, the plenty of things happening even off the field. There were no heroes in this team. Who was the big name? You, you, if you take the South African eleven and the Sri Lankan eleven and you pick up a combined eleven, leading into the series, how many Sri Lankan players might have featured in that? So that tells a story. We're looking for new heroes and uh, here there's, there's some hope and that's the most important thing. So, yeah, really happy for the boys. Now, the most important thing is time to move forward. World Cup around the corner. Thoughts go back to 1996 where again the boys were cornered, galvanized them. They came out as a unit. Here they've done the same thing. So positive vibes once again. Russell Arnold, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave your comments in the comment section below. Click on the bell icon for notifications.